Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jody Hansen, Director of Public Affairs and Communication for Johnson County Government. We've got Dr. Somni Ariola with us today. He's the Director of Johnson County Department of Health and Environment. We also have Elizabeth Holshue, who is the Director of Epidemiology. Thank you both for being here. We also have Allison, our ASL interpreter. Thanks for being here as well. Dr. Ariola, maybe you could please start by telling us what the plans are for the week at the vaccination clinics. Thank you, Jody, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, our plans for the week um, is um, a fairly busy one. Um, tomorrow, Tuesday, we will hold the last of the clinics that focused on our 80 plus population. And um, again, uh, today over the weekend, we are continuing to um, see a few 80 plus uh, trickle in that needs to uh, have an appointment and we're working them in. So um, to be clear, uh, just because we are not having a clinic that focus on the 80 plus does not mean that we're not vaccinating in that group. So if you have anyone that we have missed or that needs an appointment, please let us know. Um, on, on Wednesday after tomorrow, um, our focus then shifts to the 65 plus category. That still covers anyone that's 65 or older, 70, 80, 90, you're covered in that group, we'll walk you in. Uh, that appointment for uh, tomorrow and for Wednesday, uh, last time I checked earlier, are completely booked. And I'll come back and talk about uh, uh, Thursday and Friday. But the good news, though, is for those in our 65 plus category, is appointments next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, um, at least uh, uh, 5,600 uh, could be uh, appointments, could be higher would be focused on our 65 plus category. So if you are uh, one of our residents who have been um, asking us when to get an appointment, that there will be a huge opportunity coming. Uh, 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 I expect those appointments to be available uh, tomorrow or latest by Wednesday. And um, you have an opportunity to, to book, uh, to um, get vaccinated. I will say uh, weekly, uh, just to um, kind of provide a very broad uh, um, uh, perspective is that um, the allocations of vaccine that we get this week, there's a, a big portion of that that's also going to our health systems who are also vaccinating in the 65 plus category. So our 5,600 um, spots will be in addition to those that uh, are available through our other providers, will be in addition to those that are available through our pharmacy programs. And so collectively, uh, this week, next week should be provide uh, a lot of opportunities for uh, people to get uh, to get vaccinated. Now, uh, do I think that will cover everyone? Absolutely not. That's a very, very large group. But uh, we're going to be uh, chipping away um, uh, this couple uh, next couple of weeks uh, and uh, 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 reducing the number of persons remaining in that group. The other question that we've we've had uh, is. Um, uh, when do I get my, my second dose? Uh, so we have opened up uh, opportunities this uh, Thursday and Friday. Thursday focused on Pfizer second dose and part of Friday also focused on Pfizer second dose. And for those with Moderna second dose, we opened up a lot of appointments on Friday. Um, I would say that um, we started opening up about, about a thousand appointments for Moderna doses. And um, uh, last time I checked this morning, we had uh, less than 500 of you that have taken uh, of those appointments. And that's okay. If you've gotten your second uh, doses, that's okay. But I also want to reemphasize what we said last week, just because we are now going to open up an, uh, a clinic that's focused on Moderna second appointment, doesn't mean that you don't get your, your second dose. We have your shots. There will be opportunity to get it, even if you can't get it on, on Friday, to be clear. And definitely for Pfizer, if you can't get it this Thursday or Friday, we'll have additional opportunities available to you. Here's part of why we're able to do this uh, this week and next week. Uh, this week, in addition to the uh, normal um, uh, vaccine supply that we got, uh, the KDHED tell us that we are going to get an additional three vaccines, uh, three trays. We don't have them yet. They typically come on Tuesday or Wednesday. So, so here's the breakdown for the week, and then I'll invite Elizabeth to uh, kind of dive deeper into uh, childcare and K through 12. Is this week 
of the where we were scheduled to receive six trays of um, Pfizer vaccine, and uh, and in each of those trays, uh, 195 vials. Uh, there uh, approximately there's about six doses in each of those vials, and so. Um, so that that puts it that just around seven thousand doses of Pfizer vaccine coming in, and uh, and then we are scheduled to receive one uh, tray of Moderna vaccine. That's about one thousand doses of 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 of, of that. But now we're we're told to expect an additional three trays, and uh, at about uh, one thousand one hundred uh, doses each, and so that allowed us to um, to. Uh, add two more, uh, 2,200 more doses for 65 plus and one tray, 1,100 doses to effectively finish vaccination in our child care category. And so not only do we have enough doses now to finish largely, it doesn't mean there won't be a few remaining uh, K through 12 educators, but also our child care providers. And I do want Elizabeth to, uh, not just the uh, good news of the uh, uh, 5,600 or more uh, Appointments next week. It's uh, where we are with uh, educate, our educator and child care vaccination. Elizabeth. Thank you, Dr. Ariola. We have a number of clinics this week and next, and we're very excited again in partnership with Children's Mercy um, because of the extra days that. Governor Kelly has sent forth to us, as well as the ability for us to give some of our trays that come into Johnson County over for the child care providers, um, since those aren't covered under Governor Kelly's K through 12. Um, we should be getting through the first doses for nearly every educator and child care provider who is interested in receiving the vaccine next week. Um, we have three K through 12 clinics this week for both public and private and parochial schools, um, which is about 3,500 doses that we'll administer. And then we have a clinic for child care providers tomorrow night, which is just under 1,200 doses. And we'll be replicating that pretty much for the following week, which means that um, by the middle of March, we will have given everybody first doses and we'll be moving into second doses for all of our K through 12 and child care providers, which is incredibly exciting. Um, again, with, this could not be done, um, particularly at the speed without the partnership with Children's Mercy Hospital, um, as well as Governor Kelly focusing on K through 12 educators and providing extra trays. Now, I know that we do have a lot of questions oftentimes in these about individuals who maybe um, live in Johnson County, but perhaps work over in KCMO as a teacher. Um, I will say that the Pharmacies are retail pharmacy program partners, um, which are Balls Foods and um, Walmarts, and I believe one more. And if you go to our website at jococov.org slash coronavirus, you can find those that entire list. They are also now allowed to educate or to immunate immunize educators. Um, so if you're one of those individuals who lives in Johnson County but works over in KCMO or somewhere over in Missouri, I would definitely um, recommend that you go ahead and, and get on our website, look at those different sites for our pharmacy partners, um, and see if you can get signed up through them if you're waiting for a vaccine. Right. So, so thank, thank you, Elizabeth. And, um, and I, again, if you, just to reemphasize that um, what is reflected uh, in uh, this distribution of vaccines and our efforts, it's what's been our priority over throughout the past one year. It's our most vulnerable population, our older population. It's keeping our schools open. And so uh, we uh, did communicate um, last week also with uh, our superintendents of schools, really emphasizing uh, our support for schools reopening, largely based on these efforts. Now we have seen some of our long-term care facilities that are allowing uh, visitors and letting people uh, see their loved ones. Uh, again, there are steps that has to be taken to still continue to ensure things are safe. And so, uh, and I'm saying that because people ask us, how do we start to roll things back? You can start to see some of our efforts, targeted vaccination effort, begin to influence some of the decisions, decisions that we are making or decisions that we are supporting. And so um, after we are done with uh, allocating resources now to, um, to uh, educators, and to child care providers, uh, our primary focus still remains at 65 plus, but then we are going to be working in um, uh, our uh, uh, developmental services 
um, are, are other groups that are in uh, phase two uh, that uh, we can move through. So um, again, um, uh, it's uh, the, the, the more vaccines that, that we get, the quicker that we can walk uh, through this. I've spoken with uh, uh, quite a few of our health uh, systems today. And just like we are, uh, the, the, the idea behind our approach to this is that we can scale up. And I spoke with uh, a couple of them today, and the issue is get us more vaccine. Get us more vaccine, we can scale up. And so um, I think uh, the beauty of, uh, of this approach uh, will be seen when we have more vaccine, which is really providing multiple channels, avenues for you to receive the vaccine. And all of those channels have ample ability to scale up. Uh, 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 we, we, and I was checking the numbers earlier today with Elizabeth, is uh, looking at the total number of vaccinations given in the county. Right now, the what we printed out this morning is showing 77,000 plus, but we know that uh, a few of our health systems have not been able to report into that system since January. So that number is uh, on the other side of 80,000, no question about it, and about uh, 50,000 of those have received both first and second doses. And so those numbers are going to keep uh, uh, creeping up as we vaccinate more and more every week. Not quite where we want to be because we know we have capacity to do a lot more, but better than where we were a couple of months ago. Elizabeth, did you have something to add to that? Yeah, I was going to say, just jumping on, I think you're absolutely right, Dr. Arola. You can actually start seeing sort of the fruits of this vaccination labor, if you will, um, of our vaccine campaign. I was on our long-term care facility dashboard today. We were down to four long-term care facilities with outbreaks, and three of those are just one day away from being taken off of that list, meaning they've gone through two incubation periods or 28 days since their last case. So it looks like, um, you know, by the middle of this week, we're going to have one facility left and they're already on sort of that downward uh, slide from their outbreak. So it's really incredible to see, you know, as these vaccines have rolled out, as we've gotten the coverage, um, certainly in these really narrow pockets like our long-term care facilities, we are starting to see how successful this can be and to see our healthcare, provi or healthcare providers are immunized and, and completing those in our schools and our childcare, it really does feel like we're starting to make some progress in this. Um, and so it's just really exciting to see that our seniors are now being spared. We're seeing decreases in our, in our deaths in that age population. It's just for those of us who have been doing this for a year, for all of you who have been witnessing this for a year, I, it feels like we're starting. We're starting to see some of that. So, just really excited and relieved to be to be on this precipice. So, that that is great news because I can remember when that list of long term care facilities was a lot longer. Oh, for, um, it was forty plus. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to yeah. say that's mm -hmm. that's great to hear. Now, at the same time, I would assume you would both say that this is not the time to to let down your guard as far as the personal steps that we all take every day. Oh, absolutely. Very, very important message is uh, uh, Elizabeth mentioned death, but also hospitalization metrics. The numbers are also down, but we know that there are concerns about the variant that's circulating in New York now, which is being seen in a lot of neighborhoods. There are concerns about the UK, the South Africa, and the Brazil. So many variants that are out there. We have successfully, through a combination of effort, there's no magic one there. Uh, uh, so vaccination is one piece of it. Masking is the second piece. Physical distancing, avoiding indoor environments, all of those we have to continue to do them. That's proven successful for us. Again, uh, remember last year, CDC director was pretty clear that mask at that time may be more important than the, than the vaccine. So getting vaccinated does not give us the liberty to stop doing those things. Uh, if we want to keep this down, if we want to retain the gains that we have made, we have to continue to do those things. And I will say that, um, you know, we saw throughout the country this really rapid decline in cases the same way we did in Johnson County. But even in recent days, you've heard the CDC director and other directors from uh, throughout the country starting to, to throw a little caution out there because some of that decline is now starting to sort of stabilize and level off, um, you know, even in Massachusetts. 
Massachusetts, I saw a graph from them where they're starting to see it peak back up again, and, and they're starting to maybe see an increase. And, and the fear is that that is due to um, some of these other variants that Dr. Ariel was talking about. A number of them do seem to be more contagious, meaning that if I'm infected, I'm more likely to pass it on to you if I'm not doing all the things that we need to do with masking and distancing. Um, and so while it is all very promising and, and our case counts, and the number of cases and hospitalizations and deaths look better than they have in months and months and months. Um, we're still not out of the woods yet. There are some things that are concerning and other concerning signs throughout the country. So um, I know we're tired, but we've still got to keep it up and, and keep wearing those masks. Uh, and, and that trend that you, uh, you talked about uh, is also true here. Uh, the past couple of days, we have kind of leveled up and we're still not uh, down, down to where we were before we started seeing the uptick in July. So we still have a lot of work to do, just to, to be very clear. Okay, thank you both, to both of you. Um, we'll go ahead and take a few questions from Facebook if that's okay. Uh, we have one question here. Why are we still in phase two when the rollout plan says, says phase three starts March 1st? I believe the rollout plan said phase three, March, and those were estimates. I don't believe it said March 1st. Uh, that's the first thing. But why are we still in uh, in uh, phase two? Because phase two is a very large group. It's a function of how many vaccines we have received and why we continue to um, make a case to KDHE, the state, that uh, we need to receive a vaccine amount that's commensurate with uh, population. Uh, we represent 21% of the population. Uh, uh, we were getting when the state was receiving 45,000 doses a week, just about 14% of the allocation. Now the state is getting more and uh, we're still not receiving that. So, but that's a different, uh, different challenge. If we get more, we have capacity to distribute them as quickly as we receive them, receive them just, like, just as we're doing. So we'll be able to move to the next phase when we have gone through a significant portion of people in phase two. We're still in phase two, tier one. There's still several other groups that are part of phase two that we've not been able to vaccinate. However, none is as big as the 65 plus or even the educator child care category. So we'll be able to move through them quicker. And so, but again, uh, we would be, uh, if we we'll move to phase three uh, when the governor determines it's time to do that. I believe, uh, depending on uh, what you hear and what you read, that um, smaller communities with um, a smaller population here who are closer to the end of uh, to finishing phase two may not need to receive uh, allocation until larger communities like ours get closer to the end. So if that means uh, more vaccine coming into the county, that, that's a great thing. I will tell you in terms of absolute amount of vaccinations given, we have given a lot, but we, this is a very large county. This is a very large group. And even if we uh, uh, assume, uh, think the number that we've seen, uh, maybe uh, around 50,000, maybe slightly over, have received uh, both of their doses. That's probably uh, 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 just around a third of our estimate of what we need to do in this group. Um, assuming that everyone is being vaccinated. Either way, we still have a lot of work to do. We can do that very quickly if we have more vaccine. We have a question. Uh, will JCDHG be reaching out to the homeless population? And does a homeless person need identification to get a vaccine? Uh, the answer to the first one is yes. Uh, we would be uh, vaccinating everyone, um, including uh, uh, homeless population. And they are in phase two, tier two. So we will be vaccinating in that group very, very soon. And uh, our, our job, our responsibility is not to put obstacles, additional obstacles in the parts of people that are getting vaccinated. Look, here's the deal. You want the vaccine, we want to give it to you. We want as close to 100% of our residents vaccinated. Uh, there's nothing in what we know about the spread of the virus that has anything to do with um, whether you have an ID card or you do this or you do that. So that doesn't matter to us as much. The only reason why identification or screening for what you do matters is right now strictly because we don't have enough vaccine. Uh, our goal is to 
get this vaccine into the arms of as many people as possible. And in groups where that's a challenge, we, we will not be putting additional obstacles on the path of people getting vaccinated. Great, thank you. We have a question about uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Any word from the state on where those allocations will go? Mm, no. Elizabeth, had anything from the state? You know, I did hear just a little bit that um, at this point, it seems as though we may receive uh, some Johnson & Johnson, but I always caution people that in this pandemic, everything can change. What I say today may change in the next half hour. So um, I think at the end of the day, though, whether it's the Johnson & Johnson or the Moderna or the Pfizer, if you have the opportunity to get a vaccine, get the vaccine, no matter what it is. Um, the At this point, as you know, we don't have enough vaccine to meet the need of everybody who wants it. So we we are happy to take whatever we can get in our hands uh, and we will be administering it as quickly as possible. And we definitely will not be um, trying to make any uh, distinctions between those. That's uh, logistically, it's a one, one shot uh, vaccine. Uh, also 100% effective against hospitalization and death. And um, uh, we will be giving out the vaccine as we receive them. And that's a, that's a very, very effective vaccine. So uh, we're getting a couple comments on Facebook, just again, concerned that uh, other groups are getting in front of the 65 plus. So I, I think this would be a great time to reiterate the good news you had at the very beginning on, on what is yeah. the, what's available for 65 plus yeah. this week uh, and especially next week, just to clear yes. up the confusion. Yeah. Yes, the, no groups are not getting in front of 65 plus. 65 plus still remains on top of our list. And that's where a, 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 a very, very high uh, percentage of our allocations the past one and a half months have gone to uh, by, by far. But also understand that uh, in phase two, even in phase two tier one, uh, we have more than the 65 plus. We have the law enforcement group. We have uh, educators K through 12. We have childcare. We still have um, uh, grocery workers, restaurant bars, also in tier one that we have not even started to address. So groups are not getting in front of that. And to be clear, uh, 80, the 80 plus that we focused on, uh, and especially these last three clinics trying to get through that list, that's Thursday, last week, Thursday, Friday, and tomorrow is part of the 65 plus. The clinic that begins on Wednesday is 65 plus, all of the uh, estimated 5,600 appointments that we are opening up for next week is 65 plus. That's the primary clinic that we are running this week, next week, and moving forward will still be our primary focus. So groups are not getting ahead, but understand that we have to cater to uh, several groups and we have to make decisions accordingly. Uh, now that we are done with uh, educators and childcare, when I say done, meaning that no additional allocations are there, uh, that's our primary focus, but it doesn't take away from the fact that I've got um, um, developmental services, for example, that really in theory could have been part of phase one. So I, do want, I don't want to uh, give the impression that there are not additional um, uh, susceptible groups in the county because they are. We have a question about phase three. Uh, will there be some kind of an interest survey for that phase? And do we know when would that would go out? What kind of, what Elizabeth, kind of Elizabeth, take that. There, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, we have actually been in preparing for this. We understand that um, hopefully if we see an increase in our vaccine allocations, we'll be able to move through these groups uh, quicker. And certainly um, as Dr. Ariel has said, as soon as we get through that 65 and up in our educators, we're hopeful that we can move through the additional tiers in phase two pretty quickly. So my team has been working on developing a survey. I think we're just looking for the right time to um, get that out there. So stay tuned in the near future, we will get that out. We know people are really interested, but at some point too, we wanna make sure that we're getting close enough. We're getting closer to your, your phase when we can start vaccinating you um, as opposed to sort of having a survey that, that we can't actually do anything because we don't have vaccine and we're not there yet. So. It is coming um, and, and we'll get you taken care of. Great, thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, Judy, just again to, to reiterate, because you know, I keep going back to that question about the 65 plus, and I'm sorry to go back there, that between this week and next week, 
there are several, several between us and other providers, thousands of appointments available to 65 plus, thousands. Really, uh, when we look at our total allocation for next week, appointments that we've opened up, what our partners would open up, and what we estimate that um, uh, pharmacies will be providing, that's, that, that's big. And um, a lot of people should get vaccinated next week in the 65 plus category. That's good news. This is a question about um, living and working in Johnson County, but their profession is in a higher tier in Missouri. So maybe in Missouri, even though they live and work here, over in Missouri, they're already vaccinating that job, the people in that job. Yeah. Um, can they go over there to get appointments? Oh, absolutely. If you uh, want, if you are able to get appointments in Missouri, please do. Although um, I think uh, what we're hearing is, um, Missouri will only vac vaccinate people that live there. And so, but you're, if you're able to get it, please do. Um, but the, the plan for the state of Missouri is different for the plan for the state of Kansas. And we are following the plan for, for uh, the plan for Kansas. But um, anywhere you can get your shot, we have been very consistent, please get it. Yeah, and I'll just follow up. I was um, discussing with a physician who practices on both sides, and they were saying that employers could open up uh, immunizations for their staff in some way um, versus patients. So, for instance, if you are an employee in Missouri um, but live in Johnson County, you may have an opportunity. So I would certainly ask your employer if you're considered in a higher phase because of your um, sector or your employment um, and certainly reach out and you may be able to get it. But absolutely, um, wherever you can get a vaccine, go ahead and get it when you can. Great, I'm just catching up on the feed to see if there's any additional questions that we have missed. Um, I know tomorrow we're, we're gonna have some information on healthcare work. So if anybody's a healthcare worker, we're still working on something, but tomorrow at this time, uh, we'll be talking about that. So people should, should come back for that, would you say? Yes, we, Elizabeth will provide an update about that tomorrow, yes. Okay, any closing remarks before we wrap up today? Um, we uh, uh, have um, uh, very, uh, what I think are very good developments in terms of um, uh, appointments for our 65 plus. And um, when, when it becomes available, we ask that you take advantage of that. Uh, we also, I mean, for me, I get a ton of emails every day on, on this. And I've seen people that have approached me about their appointments and afford it. And then uh, a few hours later, I hear from the, hey, we got an appointment at this pharmacy or this place, and that's okay too. Um, those appointments are coming. We, our next couple of weeks, our focus is gonna be on 65 plus. Uh, largely, uh, uh, the, uh, depending on the amount of vaccine that we get in the county, uh, that should um, that should do. Um, uh, we should be able to vaccinate quite a few people uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, in that in in the in that age group, and um, and again, depending on uh, the percentage of persons that are um, uh, getting the uh, interested in getting the vaccine. It will determine what we do uh, beyond uh, the, those time period. And um, as we've always, always said, just because we don't have um, a clinic that's focused on 80 plus, that's because the last ones we, we've opened up, they have not been filled with, they actually have been filled with more people that are 65 plus. So we will continue to find ways to walk you in. Uh, we still have people, uh, and that's what Elizabeth again will provide an update about that tomorrow that are healthcare workers that we're working in. And so it just means that uh, there may not be a primary clinic for that, but we're still trying to get you vaccinated as quickly as we can. And the news about our educators and our childcare uh, pro uh, providers, excellent news. Um, not a, uh, uh, for me, uh, taking baby steps and trying to, um, uh, uh, while cautioning people to remain vigilant and to, to stay the course in terms of doing all of the necessary steps. But these are encouraging uh, things that we are, uh, we're having our schools open and people are able to see their loved ones in long-term care facilities. Th those are very important steps that we're taking. And I would follow up on that. Go ahead. As we invite our 65 and up uh, population, people who have filled out our survey, 
A, if you have not filled out our survey, please do that, jococov.org slash coronavirus phase two survey. Um, as we're sending out these emails, inviting 65 and up for the vaccine appointments, if you have gotten an appointment at another location, a pharmacy, a healthcare um, facility, you can just delete our emails. There's no need to let us know that you've been able to get that appointment. Um, as you know, we have a large number of individuals, over 50,000 between 65 and 80 that we're gonna be trying to vaccinate. So um, we're hopeful that you've been able to get it somewhere else. And, and so just go ahead and delete our email and we'll um, go ahead and, and invite someone else for that appointment. So um, we're really excited to be moving into this next phase. Again, it, it just feels like each baby step, we get a little closer. So um, we appreciate your continued patience. I I know it's felt like a long time for us to get into this tier um, or this, this portion of tier one. And I know for those of you in phase three, it feels like a really long time for us to get there, but we are moving through the news of more vaccine coming into our community is excellent. Um, the increase in partners, it's all heading in the right direction. So stay patient with us a little longer. We will get to you um, and we're trying to get vaccines in arms as fast as we can. Great. As always, thanks so much to both of you, Dr. Ariola and Elizabeth. Thanks for being here. Allison, thanks for being our interpreter today. And thanks to everybody that was watching on Facebook and asking questions and being engaged. And we will see you tomorrow. Thanks so much and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.